Hey everybody, this is Diane. Hello and welcome to Biters. And this is Marnell. And I realized, like, I only have to come up with one joke because some of our people don't cross over to our other show. So. <laughs> I don't remember your joke from last night. <laughs> uh, Feral Housewives. Ah, very good. Yes. Yeah. Well, now, but you can't just say that and then not say the joke. So the existence of domestic housewives implies that there are also feral housewives, which I like to think that we are. And then, as I said last night, Steve and Phil have decided that we're murder hornets. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, all right. So we are here tonight to discuss the... World Beyond season finale. I, you know, for some reason, I was, my brain was thinking that it was a mid-season finale, and then I was doing some reading, and I was like, oh, crap, this is the end of season one. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of did the same thing, um, and until I actually looked up the episode's titles, I was under the assumption we were also in a mid-season finale, but I think it's because it, like, it's only 10 episodes and that's short for a season and uh, yeah. They, Although and the first, fear now was, I can't remember, was the first season 10 episodes or was it six episodes? I can't remember. I think it was six. I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, must mean yeah. I need to go back and watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking about that. I restarted the Orville the, uh, the other day and I was like, I really should restart watching The Walking Dead. I am not quite um, done with Schitt's Creek yet. So yeah, I, I still have to watch that. Oh my God, it's so good. But now I have a ton of audiobooks that I have to listen to. Right, me too. And I'm <laughs> terrible. I told you last night, I download tons of audiobooks and then I don't listen to them. Yeah, like I try to listen at work, but it's just, I mean, I can barely listen to like fun stuff, let alone the serious subject matter that we get into on our other podcast. <laughs> right. So I just had this flash across my screen. Um, apparently, HBO just optioned a post-apocalyptic series called The Last of Us, which is based on a video game. Yes, my other half absolutely loves that damn game. Well, apparently HBO is going to be doing it as a series. So maybe I'll have to keep my HBO subscription on Prime anyway. Oh, and Craig Mazin, who wrote Chernobyl, and Neil Druckmann, who is part of the video game franchise, and then Carolyn Strauss from Chernobyl and Game of Thrones are executive producers. Hmm. Could be good. Maybe. We may have to cover it for the podcast, since Except it's post-apocalyptic. When, when you... Uh, I live with someone who is like a super fan of something they get all butt hurt when it's like not right oh like we <laughs> don't know anything about being super fans of something <laughs> right <laughs> i'm sorry you're gonna have to cut him some slack on that one <laughs> all right i'm sorry i totally derailed us so world beyond uh, episodes 9 and 10, which we are, for the sake of tonight's podcast, going to treat as one episode. The titles are The Deepest Cut and In This Life. So I'm going to go first because I usually don't do my rating first. Sure. I rated it 4.2 out of 5 really uneven first seasons. <laughs> I almost rated it with uh, quite the same rating yeah. um, major, <laughs> but uh, you rated it slightly higher than I did, which is unusual. Yeah, uh, especially with it, this series. Yeah, I rated it a 4.0 Complicated Mothers. Oh, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a few numbers from last week. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead, Damage from the Inside, had 1.09 million views, which was down from 1.27 million views the week prior. World Beyond really dropped off. So they went from 1.6 million views for their series premiere 
to 0.78 the week prior to 0.63 for the sky is a graveyard you know that's really surprising because it was um shown with the mid-season finale for fear that's right that's right so you think a lot of people would tune in for that and stay for world beyond Although, when I look at the numbers, it's pretty consistent, the The number of folks who, who dropped off from 6.6 six to 6.7 six, on Fear and from 1.7 to 1.8 on World Beyond, it's about the same. Hmm. So I'm thinking that the people who were going to stick it out stuck it out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Anyway, I was I I was actually bummed out to see that World Beyond had dropped off quite so badly. Well, you know, I think uh, with these last two episodes, they may have pulled it out of the ditch and renewed people's interest in at least seeing the second and final season of this series. So I I guess we'll see. I don't know. You know, is it so far in that there are people who are like, ugh. I'm done. I'm not wasting any more energy on this series. <laughs> or are there people who will will hear through the grapevine, oh, the last two episodes are pretty good, who will come back? I don't know. You know, I mean, we'll get into it when we talk Whisperer's Corner, but for what it's worth, both Eric Kane and Paul Tassi both basically said, you know, it started out really bad, but it got better, and the last two episodes were really great. Yeah, and so, um, Eric even said that like the last two episodes were so good that it made the entire season better in retrospect, and I have a bone to pick with that. I was going to say, I don't think I'd go quite that far, <laughs> but the last two episodes were good. I'm not sure what I would pick as my favorite episode. Probably that one week where, where both Fear and... World Beyond were great, and now, of course, I can't remember either one. (laughs) It was about three weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Um, So our titles, uh, The Deepest Cut. So I basically just took that to mean Huck's Betrayal. Did you have anything else? T- you know, I, I was thinking, oh, maybe they're talking about her face and they're making a big deal about the cut on her face and, and the self-inflicted injury for the sake of the CRM. And then I was like, no, I think it's really just her betrayal. <laughs> well, and yeah, then the literal deep cut that she gave Felix. Oh. Yeah. Good one, which we didn't, we didn't, now did we get the reveal, I'm I'm totally blurring them together, so bear with me, did we get the reveal that she gave him that injury in episode 9, or did we get that reveal in episode 10? I think we got the reveal in episode 10, didn't we? I thought we got it at the end of 9. Oh, maybe we did. It blurs uh, together for me also. I intentionally blurred it together, and I didn't do a very good job keeping notes, so... (laughs) Yeah, it was tough to keep notes because one, two hours worth of television. And like I, we were talking about before, like I started to write stuff down and then I was scribbling it out because I learned new information later and figured out what I was thinking was wrong. And, and so it was just it was really hard to keep notes on this episode. I will be honest and say I was just incredibly lazy and I just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I went back and tried to reconstruct notes, and I'm not very good at that, especially with two hours of of World Beyond. Um, well, and I only did one watch through because I watched it today, and there was two hours, and, you know, then we podcast. But I actually went back and kind of just skipped forward and, and you know, at random parts. I was like, oh, yeah, and wrote stuff down. So, Yeah. I only did map. I only did one watch through for each as well because I watched it, watched it today. So um the next episode was called In This Life and I mean it's obviously Huck's line in this life you've got to do bad to do good. I'm I'm loosely paraphrasing. Right. And then I was thinking about all of the different people in the episode who did bad to do good. I mean obviously Huck 
the doctor, Lila, I mean, mm-hmm. I, she's doing terrible things for the greater good. I uh, hope left uh, everyone behind. Well, you know, that's funny because I wrote down maybe even hope. So I was yeah. thinking along those same lines. And for some reason, I wrote Silas's name down. And I d- he didn't really do anything bad. So I'm not no. sure. Yeah. In fact, he did something like heroic Selfless. again. Yeah. 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 So. Um, just really quickly through directors and writers. So the director for The Deepest Cut is, uh, I believe, a woman. I, I looked it up on IMDb on my phone, so I'm going to be completely honest with you and say that I don't have the best details. Um, we have talked about Sydney Freeland before. Sydney Freeland did an episode of Fear the Walking Dead, as well as this episode of World Beyond. Um, Sydney also directed for the TV series based on the movie Heathers, did a couple of episodes of Grey's Anatomy, and then I didn't know there was a Nancy Drew 2020, but apparently there's a Nancy Drew 2020. (laughs) Neither did I. So not on the watch list, probably will never make the watch list. (laughs) I read the books when I was a kid. That's as close as I'm going to get. Of Um, course you read the books. Of course I read the books. (laughs) Um, The writers were Maya Goldsmith, Ben Sokolowski, and actually, in this life, it was Maya Goldsmith, Ben Sokolowski, and Matthew Negrete. So the first two on The Deepest Cut, all three of them together for In This Life. Um... We've talked Matthew Negrete into the ground, so I'm not going to do that again. Maya Goldsmith has done three episodes of The World Beyond, the two tonight, and then one prior. She's also worked on Pretty Little Liars and How to Get Away with Murder. And I remember talking about Ben Sokolowski because he did three episodes of World Beyond, the two tonight, one prior. But I remember talking about him because he's also worked on Arrow and The Flash. Mm-hmm. And then our director for In This Life was Magnus Martins, who we've talked about multiple times. So in addition to working on World Beyond, he has also worked on Fear the Walking Dead. He's worked on Longmire, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Luke Cage, um the series that came back into my consciousness when I was looking him up was Will, which was that series about William Shakespeare as a young man. I don't remember that. I, You know, I haven't watched it, but looking up the information on it tonight when I was reading about Magnus Martins, I thought, ah, that might have to make its way back toward the list. <laughs> it, it basically, and it looks like it got maybe one season, but it, it treats a young Will Shakespeare like a rock star with kind of the world as his oyster and, and he and his his peers are inventing theater, you know, or, hmm. or revitalizing theater in the 16th century. So Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it looked good. Um, I don't really have much more about the writers or the directors because we've talked about all of them before so I didn't spend a lot of time on them tonight but I did watch a really cool YouTube video about our featured cast member <laughs> oh my gosh I bet you did he I is enjoyed an interesting character I enjoyed our featured cast member so much and I wish I had had time to watch more because <laughs> the the uh, the YouTube video that I watched was awesome. So which YouTube video did you watch? So I actually watched the makeover with Trinity Taylor, who is a okay. drag queen from RuPaul's Drag Race. Yep. Did you watch that one? No, I did not. But I oh, did send you a God. picture. of. So our featured cast member is Felix, uh, also known as Nico Tortorella. That's what I would say, too. Yes. And Um, you reminded me, and I did not remember this, but we talked about it when we talked about the announcement of Nico as an actor on this series. Nico uses pronouns they and them. 
Yes. So we're going to try to be really good and remember to use they and then, but remember that we are both middle-aged ladies, and for us, they and them are plural pronouns, so please hang in there with us. Yes. Um, I will probably just refer to him as Nico. Oh, uh, you're going to refer to them as Nico? Yes. <laughs> so I don't screw it up like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, super interesting character. I sent you a couple of pictures mm, of, of a him. couple of very steamy pictures. Yes, I will <laughs> warn you that um, his Instagram, their Instagram, while what's that? Sorry, their Instagram, Nico's Instagram, <laughs> Nico's Instagram, thank you. Uh, is while it's uh, Instagram. PG 13, I would kind of consider it not safe for work. Um, there is a lot of pictures of Nico in the buff with, um, you know, just a candle in front of him or, you know, uh, laying face down and you can see his butt. So definitely like watch where you watch your surroundings when you're surfing his Instagram, which yeah, is um, probably Nico Tortella. Probably the person who, depending on who sees you looking at work, they might not take kindly to that. Right. Um, but his Instagram is super, Nico's Instagram is super interesting. Um, I was most interested in Nico's ink because on the show. They did that black sleeve. Yes. And uh, so were you like me? Did you say Okay, do they really have their whole arm blacked in? I did the same thing because I was like, I thought it was one of those like um, sport copper tone, you know, it's it's got the copper infused lining. Right, right, right. So I know like, what you're talking about. For healing and things like that. And so I wanted to know if if it was ink or if it, you know, wasn't. And so checking out Nico's Instagram, um, I think the reason why the show covers the um, one arm that they do is because the tattoos that Nico has on that arm are naked people. <laughs> oh, I didn't look that closely. So that makes sense. That would explain so, why would they would do that because this is YA in the ZA. Yes. And so Nico has um, the sculpture David a couple of times. Oh. And Nico has their wife. Did you know that Nico has Nico, Nico, Nico tattooed above their pubic bone? I did not know that. I learned that in that YouTube video tonight. <laughs> I would have thought that you, you would have learned it from one of the pictures <laughs> I sent you. And the drag queen who was helping Nico talk. Oh my goodness. Oh. Um, sa Nico said, do you find it funny or disturbing or something like that, that I have my name tattooed there three times? And the drag queen said, well, it's probably convenient for the person who's down there so they remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny. Did Nico reveal why he had that tattoo? No. Okay. Um, I will say, and you mentioned their wife. So uh -huh. Nico is married to Bethany C. Myers, who is described as a fitness and lifestyle entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Which I thought, oh my god. <laughs> So they married in 2018 after 11 years of dating, but they have a polyamorous relationship. And Nico describes themselves as bi and gender fluid, and they describe their relationship as polyamorous. Right. And I had to laugh. I don't know if you saw the same Wikipedia entry that I looked at, but they and the couple announced that they were in a, polyamor a polyamorous relationship, I believe, in an interview, and both were promptly disinvited to their family's Thanksgiving celebrations in 2017. That is terribly sad. It is. Unsurprising, terribly sad. Yes. Um, yeah. So I will tell you honestly, there was literally nothing on Nico's... IMDb credits that I recognized aside from World Beyond and Scream 4 
And <laughs> spoiler alert, I have never seen Scream 4. I'm guessing you have. Um, I have, yes. <laughs> Um, I have also seen, uh, he was in 15 episodes of the show The Following with Kevin Bacon. Which oh, I know you love that had, show. I remember yeah, we've you talking had about that. Quite a few cast members from the show. Um, so he got his start in television on a show they, called they, The Beautiful they. Life. <laughs> Sorry, What's that? they. Yes. Sorry. Nico is like, um, you have just completely blown your chance at ever getting a Biters interview. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. I'm um, joking. Yeah, and I think I'm probably a little more hyper-conscious of it. Number one, because I'm trying. But number two, because I've had patients who are trans. So I right. try to be... Not that Nico is trans. Um, Nico no. is, is bi and gender fluid. But I have patients who use pronouns they and them. And I struggle. So I try yes. to be really conscious of it. Sorry. So you were saying that that we've had several cast members from the following, which you yes. have really liked that show. Yes. Um, and Nico got his start. His, Nico got their start on The Beautiful Life um, with Misha Barton, who uh, got her start uh, on a big show, The OC, which was on CW. So... Um, he, they got a really big start in their career. Um, and this was after doing modeling for the Ford model agency. Um, but yes, I actually do not remember Nico from the following, even though he was in 15 episodes, uh, he just kind of, they were not the focus. So yeah. Um, but he was also, they were also in a series uh, that was on for four years. He was in 68 of the, ep they were in 68 of the episode. This is really difficult. Uh, called Younger, which I have never seen. Huh. Yeah, no, I've, I've never seen anything else that Nico is in other than World Beyond. But one, there's two things I want to highlight. Uh, Nico has a book of erotic poetry out. It is called All of It Is You. Interestingly enough, that is kind of his drag name, their drag name. Uh, the name is All of It Is You. Oh, you know, that's so funny because I saw that Nico is credited with two books. Well, it's, quote, several books, but the two that are mentioned are All of It Is You. And then apparently Nico wrote a memoir two years ago, which I think it's really interesting that they think they've been around and on this planet long enough to write a memoir. But OK, um, he, they are certainly interesting enough. Yes, that's yeah. true. Um, what drew me to uh, all of it is you is he actually has it tattooed uh, between his collarbones. Oh. Yeah. He has got, they have got a lot of ink. Yeah, a uh, lot of ink. It, it this, his, this Instagram is super, super interesting if you're just looking for some really cool ink. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to highlight was, um, you know, I always try and find a charity. Oh, cool. And uh, Nico ha de um, is involved with a charity called I Walk with Anthony. Um, Walking with Anthony believes that every person with a spinal cord injury should have equal access to life altering medical care. Our focus is on recovery through rehab. We provide direct and immediate assistance to individuals and families through our grant programs, including rehab, caregiving, special equipment, and emergency funds, which are so desperately needed. That Although, is very cool. Yeah. So you can find it at walkingwithanthony.org. And from there, it'll link you to their Facebook, their Instagram, their Twitter, all of that. I think they even have a YouTube. So... Um, I saw that on Nico's Instagram, and I also, he, they had a sign that said, um, stop intersex surgeries. 
Uh, NICO is very against uh, gender assignment surgeries when a child is born uh, having either both or ambiguous genitalia. And I, so, so I have to tell you a story, and and I I don't want to get too deep in the weeds because I don't want to violate anybody's privacy, but I have met individuals who had gender assignment surgery as infants because mm -hmm. they were born with either dual or ambiguous genitalia and then just weren't told, found out later in life and ended up having additional genital surgeries as a result of a decision that was made before that child was even developing. Right. So um, I, you know, I, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be the parent of an intersex child, but I really support that because I've seen people whose lives have been harmed by that decision being made really early on before the child has had a chance to declare him, her, or themselves as a human. Or develop a sense of what they, what they should be, if anything. Right. You know? Uh, so yeah, I, I really, I, I, it's something in, in, you know, my lifetime I've never had to consider. So, um, I, I've, I've seen similar, um, causes and, um, I've heard stories, uh, but I, I, so I just, I wanted to point it out because I think it's, it's kind of you know, an important thing um, may not be for everybody, but for those it's for those who it is important. It's it's the world, you know, it's their entire lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I came across that picture on their Instagram and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I hope that's their charity. And it's not. Um, but the spinal cord one is amazing because um, I could not imagine having a catastrophic spinal cord injury that left me debilitated because rehab, recovery, uh, any special equipment, hundreds and thousands of dollars mm -hmm. that, you know, insurance doesn't cover. So it's, it's a great charity. So I have to say, by the way, love their Instagram. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, there are some wonderful shots from World Beyond. There's a wonderful wonderful shot of Nico and Michael Cudlitz sitting together on the scene if for one of the episodes that Cudlitz directed. Yeah, I will say that Nico's uh, Twitter links to their Instagram for the most part. So if you just go and like Nico on Instagram, um, you don't really need the Twitter. <laughs> ah, okay, good to know. Um, I wanted to share that Nico was born in 1988, so that makes them 32, which I actually would have thought Nico was much younger. See, and I pegged Nico as older just because of the character on World Beyond. Really? Seems way more adult and capable and serious and you know huh. well i mean in contrast to our band of ragtag teenagers <laughs> right right uh also nico was born in chicago hey diana and steve <laughs> uh, started professional theater in seventh grade mm -hmm. is wearing a fabulous disney suit in their imdb picture is that Disney? Yeah, I had I I I um scaled in it, on it so I could see. Yeah. It looks like just pinups to me. No, I'm pretty sure it's Disney. Huh. Now you're making me doubt myself. It's amazing. It is very eye catching. Uh Nico has the same uh picture on their Instagram way, way back. Let me tell you, I did a deep dive on his inst their Instagram. Um, the only other thing that I was going to say, and I alluded to it, and you alluded to it, is that Nico competed on RuPaul's Celebrity Drag Race in April of this year. Mm-hmm. And you it actually sent me a picture from their appearance. Yes. And it was for charity. Unfortunately, Nico did not win. Uh... But they also competed in a lip-sync lip battle. 
okay. there's a picture of that on their Instagram. And and I completely lied. So you're right. It looks like it is just pinups. I okay. got distracted by the one that looks like Cruella DeVille on the top. <laughs> so there we are. It is a fabulous suit nonetheless. Yes, but there is a amazing peach taffeta gown picture oh. in their Instagram. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. So, by the way, um, I'm not going to share it on Biters because it's a little bit not safe for work. And there would probably be some people who would be offended. But I would encourage anybody who's interested to look at the 10-minute video of Nico getting a drag makeover by Trinity Taylor because it is hilarious. (laughs) It's definitely inappropriate, but it is hilarious. All the best humor is. <laughs> well, anything else about Nico before we move on to Whisperer's Corner? No, you know, I'm I'm really glad we we did Nico as a featured cast member because uh, we had not before. When you asked me, I was like, hmm, I don't think so. And then I started looking into them and I was like, yeah, no, we definitely didn't do Nico. <laughs> and I actually don't think we've done all of our main cast because of the overlap because of the overlap exactly because yep. there were weeks where we did people from fear versus people from this series so we may have to go back and look at who we haven't covered and cover them in in future episodes yeah sometime in 2021 <laughs> we're not really sure when and we know they will most likely be around because nobody died oh don't get me started <laughs> All right. Well, we should get started. Right. <laughs> um, Whisperer's Corner. So there was quite a bit. First and foremost, and he did not tell me that this was something that I should not share. So I'm assuming it's it's common knowledge. Uh, Tom Omara told me today that Fear the Walking Dead got confirmed for season seven. Which doesn't surprise me because they've bitten off a lot of story this season so i can't really see them wrapping up the world of fear the walking dead in what's left in this season i actually read an article where the two knuckleheads got interviewed and um they said that there is definitely an end game they know how this series is going to end there has not been any conversation around wrapping fear up so there's not like a projected time frame for fear to to finish out like there is with the main series. Yeah, there's just too much storytelling to try and wrap it up so quickly. So Yeah, I definitely don't think it's going to be wrapped up in, no. what, nine episodes? Yeah. Nope. Uh, there was a little more information about the ant- anthology series that was proposed. As far as I had heard, it wasn't greenlit, but it sure sounds like it's greenlit. So I'm talking about Tales of the Walking Dead. This was an interview on comicbook.com and they talked to Scott M. Gimple quite a bit. And then they talked about different things that are being proposed that that are kind of out in the public eye. So apparently Cudlitz has been hinting that Abraham Ford might make an appearance um, it sounds like they're definitely planning on more of Beta's backstory. Mm-hmm. They Tragic are... backstory, apparently. Right? You must have looked at the same article. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, they are in talks with John Carroll Lynch to reprise the role of Eastman. And if you like John Carroll Lynch, uh, go watch Big Sky. It's awesome. Oh, that's the new Hulu series you were talking about, isn't it? Yes. Okay, I'll probably need to put that on the list and higher up on the list. So I I was actually really excited to see that they've been talking with John Carroll Lynch about doing another Eastman episode because I really liked that episode. Yes, he was a a great character. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, We mentioned this when we were first talking about Tales of the Walking Dead, so Sonequa Martin-Green has said that she would love to revisit Sasha. And Sasha deserves yes. more time on screen. She was an awesome character. Yep. And then um, Gimple kind of wrapped it all up by saying, you know, we're still planning. We're, we're quote, still sequencing. So, you know, 
not really sure when it's going to premiere. He said something about not wanting to flood the market. And I thought to myself, huh, I wish you would have thought that when you put World Beyond and Fear on the same night. Yeah. But Thanks there, for that. there we go. Um, also on comicbook.com, Gimple is fueling the rumors that Madison may be returning to Fear. So, you know, last week we talked about Ian Goldberg and Andrew Chambliss Mm -hmm. fueling that rumor. Well, Gimple is saying, keep hope alive. So, ugh, I just find that irritating. There's some speculation in the article that maybe they're talking about Madison coming and doing an episode of the the anthology series versus coming back to fear. You know, I I think I've said it before on on Fear the Wall. I'm I'm kind of ambiguous about Madison coming back. Uh, like it 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 would be interesting. Like I'm not for or against uh, strongly either way. So. Well, so Gimple is also adding fuel to the fire where people are speculating that she's the one who saved Morgan. Right, right. But so. I think. I think an anthology episode would be awesome. And Kim Dickens has said that she would like to come back and do Madison again. So, you know, I'm sure she would be thrilled to come back on to Fear. I'm sure she would be thrilled to have an anthology episode. Yeah. I don't know. Like you, I'm ambivalent about her coming back on Fear. I'm not hugely against it. I'm not ecstatic about it. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, all I can say about Fear right now is it's better than last season was. Yes. <laughs> yes. I had to think about it, but yes. <laughs> all right. Um, so Paul Tassie's article about the World Beyond finale. I have a bone to pick with his article. So he said, World Beyond finally spells out CRM's A's and B's. No, they didn't. Yeah, I was like, okay, did I miss that? Well, that's exactly what I thought. And then I read his essay and he said, you know, the A's are the best and brightest minds and B's are everything else. And I'm like, eh. That's not quite what I got. Yeah, I, I, it could be. I don't feel like it got spelled out. <laughs> so... Did I do I remember when um, they they showed the other scientist uh, as a zombie in the lab? They were branding him with an A. I can't remember. I honestly cannot remember. But there was definitely a reference to A's and B's yeah. when we saw that scientist, and it so. certainly was not in the context of this is the best and brightest mind, and the B's are everybody else. <laughs> Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know that I necessarily agree with Paul Tassie. I also don't know that I necessarily agree with him or Eric Kane that this was a great series that got, well, a kind of weak series that got great as it went along. I'm not sure that I would go there. Um, so my bone to pick with Eric Kane is probably best left for running potpourri. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got a little tiny bit more in Whisperer's Corner. So gamesradar.com, which I cannot tell you how reliable a source that is, but I did, <laughs> I did find it on another website as well. So Hersh- they said that Herschel Maggie's son will be in season 10C. And then I actually saw a picture on another website, and oh my gosh, he's a little teeny tiny Glenn right down to the baseball cap. Oh my goodness. He's so cute! Yeah, What's so... What's funny is, like, because his name is Herschel, I, I was picturing a little tiny Herschel. <laughs> no, like, right down to the baseball cap, right. and the caption was something like, I'm not crying, you're crying! Oh. <laughs> Um, and then NME.com, also not, you know, something that I can reliably source, confirms that Hillary Burton does in fact have bright green hair as Lucille. Okay. She's wearing a wig. You know? Yeah. I mean, she's she's a cancer patient. She's undergoing chemo. She's wearing a wig. But I, it's an interesting choice. 
Because that yeah. is definitely not how Lucille is represented in the Negan one-off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was maybe just a trick of the lighting. I did too. Or she was, it was meant, because she's like, I don't know, like a ghost that's haunting him or something. She was meant to be portrayed as like decaying. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you and I talked about it when we talked about yeah. her picture last week or the week before. And I was like, you know, it looks like her hair is green. Yeah. Well, apparently her hair is green. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that's it for Whisperer's Corner. Do you have anything else? It sounds like you did a little bit of reading about the news. I did, yeah. Uh, I came across the same stuff as you. And yeah, I kind of have the the same feelings as you. Um, <laughs> the only other thing I found was an insider article that uh, says that the final TWD um, season may be split into three parts. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. (laughs) 11A, 11B, and 11C. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but, you know, they're... They've it's got 24 us 24 episodes though. So that's that's a lot of episodes. Well, but that is 8 8 and 8. So that makes sense. Right. Right. Okay. Um well, I've got a little bit for housewives housekeeping and this you you've heard all of this because you and I talked last night, but for the people who don't listen to the real housewives of Alaska, um just so you know, we did cover Harriet the 2019 movie with Cynthia Erivo, who also starred in The Outsider on HBO. It's our our take is definitely very lefty. So if you don't like that part of The Real Housewives, you should skip it. But <laughs> for anybody who is interested, um, we talk about Harriet and we we go pretty deep into the, the topic. Yeah. And I think we both had pretty mixed feelings about the movie. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, the uh, the subject matter was amazing. The movie was okay. Yeah. As I said last night, no better than it had to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, for people who ha- don't aren't part of my Facebook world privately, I have been binging Schitt's Creek and I love it. It's hilarious. If you haven't watched it and you need a good laugh, please watch it. It is so funny. Oh my God. Um, I wanted to share about a couple of books that I'm reading. So I started reading the Fables graphic novels. Have you heard of those? No. So they're written by a guy named Bill Willingham. And basically, um, the world of fairy tales has taken up residence in New York. Hmm. And so, like, the Big Bad Wolf is... He's a a private detective or a police detective or and and uh, Snow White runs the the apartment building that all of the fables live in. It's it's pretty interesting. I'm not in huh. love with it yet, but it's pretty interesting. And then my bestie Todd told me about a series called the Expeditionary Force, which is like kind of a space war, space opera, starship troopers kind of thing. Um, but basically the aliens are giant hamsters <laughs> and it's very funny. I'm enjoying it greatly. It's kind of comedy meets starship troopers. I was just thinking, well, at least they're not giant bugs. It's pretty funny. Um, funny. so I'm, I'm only part way into it, but I'm enjoying that. Uh, you and I talked last night. Chris Hardwick interviews Carl Urban this week on his ID10T podcast. And then I wanted to mention to you, because I heard this interview with Alec Baldwin on, um, oh my goodness, Molly Jongfast and Rick Wilson. What is their podcast? I did not know Molly Jongfast had a podcast they do a podcast for the daily beast and i'll be darned oh the new abnormal it's political so i mean if you don't again if you don't like the real housewives lefty politics you probably don't want to listen to it but they interview alec baldwin and he happened to mention that he is 
star not starring. He's he's part of the cast of a dramatized version of Dirty Dirty John. Ooh. Yeah. And it's gonna premiere on Peacock sometime next year. Interesting. Yes. Because of course, uh Lifetime did basically a uh, kind of an FBI Files reenactment of it um, as a series. Like a docu-series, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then season two, they did the Betty Broderick story. Oh, I know uh, I've been interested in that just because Christian Slater is in that. Yeah, he was good. Um, and like at the end of it, you're like, well, you know, I'm not sure which one of these people is the horrible person. <laughs> the one, that, um, the season that Christian Slater is in? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I have listened to the Dirty John podcast. It was very I good. Dirty John yes. show. I will totally watch a dramatized version of it. I will too. I am not ashamed to say it. <laughs> and for people who don't know, there is a little bit of a Walking Dead crossover with Dirty John. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to spoil it. I, you no. know, people will have to, to listen to or watch Dirty John and, and find out what that is. But there is definitely a Walking Dead aspect to the story. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Everything I need to know, I learned on Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Do you have anything for Housewives Housekeeping? I don't. I think that takes us to our goods, bads, and uglies then. I think so. All right. Do you want to go or do you want me to go? Uh, go right ahead. Well, so my good, and I'm going to be very honest, I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but then I decided that I loved it. It was Percy talking to Elton. Like like the... the Hallucination yes, type. Yeah. Yes. And so, and I, you know, so at first I was like, I love this because I always love a good ghost story. I will always love a good ghost story. And then just like you, I was like, cross out ghost, hallucination. (laughs) But, you know, if you think about it, this really is carrying on a grand tradition from the main series. So we had Rick's hallucinations, possibly ghostly visitations of Lori. Mm-hmm. We had his whole thing with the telephone, mm-hmm. which actually was in the graphic novels as well. Right. And then we had Merle showing up in Chupacabra. Right. As a hallucination. But we weren't sure if it was a hallucination or a ghost. Right. So, you know, yeah. it's small, but I really liked it. And um, yeah, that's my good. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I I I initially don't like it because Percy did turn out to be alive and everything, but Elton like he even rationalizes is like you're not really talking to me. You're right. you know <laughs> you're all my conscience. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah, yeah, whatever. So yeah, I it was just it was a weird way to convey it. I'm like, well, if you wanted. Percy to like talk why didn't you just like wake him up you know like it like as the show why didn't you just have him conscious well so then when Percy does wake up and grabs the the walkie talkie for a minute where you like oh this is another hallucination which I'm sure is actually what they wanted us to think right right huh (laughs) <laughs> you're still not sure what to think about it <laughs> I, yeah, I, you're like huh definitely not my good yeah yeah so i i will tell you that i did have trouble actually picking out a good and not that i did not like the episode it's just that there was so much that it was really hard to put a finger on why i liked the two episodes which we're podcasting as one um but i I do have to say that I was pleasantly surprised by um, the Silas's innocent plot line of that it wasn't uh, Percy and his uncle setting him up and, you know, just being con artists that it I I was wrong. It was Huck who set uh, Silas up. Um, And I I really liked that, like, 
you know, they pulled a fast one on us. And even though I totally saw Huck coming, I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. I, I completely bought into the fact that, you know, of course, Percy and Uncle Tony, Anthony, Tony, yeah, Tony, um, were, you know, con artists and that like, and I was uh, still fairly, you know, still so even in this episode up until like we saw Percy, Percy's gushing, bleeding body. I was like, so that's it. We're just not going to hear anything more about Tony and Percy. (laughs) And they went off on their merry way. I mean, there was still part of me that was convinced they were both alive and that, that it truly was a grift. Right, right. Uh, Because, you know, Tony's face was smashed in. So Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we've, where have we seen that before? We Mm -hmm. had just seen that on Fear the Walking Dead. Um, And so I, I wasn't entirely unconvinced that this still wasn't a grift until it was like, okay, yeah, Percy has really lost a lot of blood. I don't think he's faking anything. Yeah, he was pretty pale. <laughs> I, I was. And then I was like, really? A poultice would fix? Fi- no. <laughs> no. I was going to say, I mean, has there been enough time to really develop an infection, you know, if he's actively still bleeding? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I, I, so I like that, uh, we found out Silas was innocent, that, um, we kind of have Percy back in our group now. Mm -hmm. Um, he seems to be joining us and without, uh, uh, Tony. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I thought that was really cool that, um, that it was Huck. Uh, I don't get how it was Huck. Like, it the setup was so perfect for Percy to have, like, separated everyone out by, like, making Hope mad about the Truth or Dare game. Mm -hmm. And then Elton runs after her, but he's a little drunk. And And then then, Iris gets separated. and Yeah, he separates Iris with the date. And Silas, like, gets all mad because he's got a crush. So, like, it was a perfect setup for it to be totally part of a grift. And I'm like, okay, so did Huck mean to do all that? Or was that just she took advantage of an opportunity? Um, Which I guess... That's kind of how it happened. Um, she needed to start peeling off some some witnesses. So Tony and Percy were the first to go. Uh, but yeah. So I have my- such strong feelings about Huck that I'm sure we'll talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what was your bad? So my bad, which you actually have already referenced. Ah, no death. <laughs> no death. <laughs> So I understand this is supposed to be a young adult series, but I really feel like they completely missed the opportunity for a gut punch. And that is one of the things that we have always loved about The Walking Dead is that they get in good gut punches. Yeah. I mean, Amy, Beth, Herschel... Lori, I mean, it's it's terrible. The deaths are terrible and they're gut punches. And in this episode alone, they had the chance to kill Huck. They had the chance to kill Felix. They had the chance to kill Silas. They had the chance to kill Percy. Silas, so easy because mm-hmm. why is CRM taking prisoners when they wiped Thank out you. an entire colony of people? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm just I'm I am pissed off that they didn't kill anybody this season. <laughs> I am. And, you know, part of it is because they missed out on a potential gut punch, a potentially great dramatic storyline. Right. And they would have, for me anyway, they would have sucked me in more. They would have hooked me a little harder. It it just would have meant more to me. Yeah, I mean, you... Hope could have totally pulled the trigger on mm-hmm. Huck, and we would still wind up with Hope on her way to CRM. You know, like 
Yeah. And we would have still ended up with the mothers are a complicated storyline. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I I really, I feel like actually it might have redeemed Huck a little bit. Yeah. 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 I, I'm just, I'm mad that nobody died. We have probably like, what, another 12 episodes? Like, are they just going to like start mass killing everybody next season? There's another 10. Okay. So we have 10 episodes in which someone could die meaningfully. And it better be somebody big and not just the dad. (laughs) Ugh. All right. What was your bad? So I have my bad written down as no one was acting like themselves. Um, But what I really mean about that is... I I feel like we got a whole lot of character development in a certain way over the past eight episodes. And then nine and ten, fast and furious, like everyone just started going off the off the, you know, map, um, quite literally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like everyone was making like fast rash decisions and like doing things that were completely out of character and uh, like it was just it was too much in the two episodes I feel that they could have spread out some of this story in in they could have dropped a few things in like the past four or five episodes and made those episodes way more interesting And still gotten to where they are without this fast and furious, you know, we're going to have a fight and then we're going to separate everybody. And no, we find out Huck's bad and and Silas is good. And like, it was just it was just too much to cram into two episodes. Like you could have still ended on the the cliffhanger. You, You could have still had two very exciting episodes. You didn't have to put it all into, you know, I just yeah. Too many irons in the fire. So your bad leads directly into my ugly, <laughs> which is that Huck was so weird. Yeah. She was totally not at all herself. And she was completely telegraphing her betrayal with her totally bizarre behavior. Yeah. The cool chick became cagey all of a sudden. Well, and like overacted everything. Yeah. Yeah totally yeah. overacted everything and i was like you know she could have played it cool and no one would have caught on yeah because i don't believe that they wanted to believe that no and her. i definitely do not believe that anyone especially iris who does not strike me as a particularly bright human being <laughs> ugh, I, I don't believe that anyone was suspicious I don't. And then Huck started acting really weird in these last two episodes. And then Iris was like, I've been suspicious all along. Yeah. No. (laughs) No, it really bothered me. It was, as you said, all of these characters suddenly started doing things that were very out of character. And Huck was definitely the worst. Yes. Although I have to say, Elton ripping up his mother's manuscript was right up there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess that was the plot device for him to go chase the wind and find <laughs> right. Percy, but, um, yeah. So was your ugly a good ugly or a bad ugly? I don't know. <laughs> my my ugly is a question. I'm giving you uh, less grief than I used to because I find that I'm doing more and more <laughs> of the, well, it was good and bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is a good or bad. It's a question like, so is Lila really in love with Leopold or is she just a plant to, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but she's awful. She is an I, awful human being. Uh, yeah. I Her whole I rehearsal she, of the lines that she was going to say to Leo about hope. Her, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I was not, like, I liked her better as the silent uh, scientist, you know, watching over all of the experiments. Like, yeah, like, 
we can, like I said, we we got a sense that she did have some extra relationship with the the girls' father because of the way that she kind of beamingly looked down at the card from them. Um, it, it was a little more than this is my colleague's daughter's right. and one of them may be the key to the future. It, it was more tender than that. And so it was like, okay, they're probably in a relationship. Well, bam, they smack us with it this time. And like, I just, I didn't need to see her on his lap or them smooching. Like, I got it. apparently her lentils are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> But Leopold is the ever so the gentleman. <laughs> right. <laughs> Either that or like food is like scarce. <laughs> Probably it's both. It's a crime to waste it or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just, I I don't know if, if like, oh, maybe she was a plant, but she fell in love with him and we're going to get that old tale. But I just... I I don't know where they're trying to go with that. And it felt off. And that actually kind of takes me into one of the comments I have in Rotting Potpourri. Okay. So, everyone in CRM is terrible. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. We I, I said this to you earlier. I honestly can't remember if I said it while we were podcasting. I think I said it before we logged on. Everyone in CRM is terrible. I don't like anyone in yeah, CRM. Yeah, zero redeeming in, qualities. Including Huck. I am so yeah. angry with Huck. Yeah. I'm furious with her. I liked her so much as the person who killed her unit and kind of <laughs> completely went against the orders of her superior officers and had some redeeming qualities. I don't like her at all. So was that storyline BS then? I don't know. Yeah, like I, I feel like it's still maybe true, and she actually did cut her face one to, kind of have this thing in the the campus col- colony, um, but also she did it because it's like paying an homage to her buddy that she killed. Mm-hmm. Like I, I kind of think that may still be real. It wasn't just a, a story that you know, because she didn't. She only shared it with hope. I still don't like her. Yeah, yeah. I, I And I'm disappointed because she was a really interesting and likable character. And maybe I should be glad that they've evoked this much emotion for me. <laughs> so, and I think they're still going to try and redeem her. I think you're right. Because she was not in on the massacre. So um, I kind of think she's going to get a little disgusted with CRM over that. And she's going to, like rescue hope and iris or or something or kill her mom i don't know so she'll do something to try and redeem herself and we talked a little bit about that again i think it was before we logged on which was the whole mothers are complicated and you know the loose ends make my ass itch thing (laughs) i mean (sighs) yeah okay so i just have to say really quick before you say anything again this is the YA in the ZA, and this is all a little too after school, especially for me. The whole mothers are complicated. Remember how I told you that daddies are complicated, mothers are complicated too. Oh! <laughs> well, one of our one of our writers was a pretty big writer on Pretty Little Liars, which is definitely a YA show. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Okay, your turn. Um, Sorry. So this is where my opinion of the series diverges from Eric Kane's in that I don't think these last two episodes um, like redeem the entire season. I don't either. Because there is just so much that it's like, why? Well, like I said, because it was so darn uneven. So... We predict that in 30 years, the human race will be wiped off the face of the earth. There, there's not going to be enough left of us to do anything, blah, blah, blah. So, And we want the best and the brightest in the CRM and only the best and the brightest. Yet we're going to wipe out an entire colony of like what I think it was 6,000 people in Campus Colony. 
um, of people who were fairly academic and they were self-sustaining and peaceful and, you know, like... And, and in fairness, and you and I both agreed that Paul, Tassie, and Eric Kane both made that point in their their right. reviews. Just so, just so we're, you know, full disclosure, in fairness, I agree completely. I mean, yeah. really? So... Uh, these why, are 6, why did they wipe out Campus Colony? Was it to make it so that Hope wouldn't have anything to go back to? Was it, is Hope really that big of an asset that they would well, kill 6,000 people so she couldn't go back? And even if she was, like, you're, she's, she wants to go work with her dad, you know? She misses her dad. If 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 they would have just said, hey, Hope, hey, Iris, like, you're, you should go work with your dad because you're both really brilliant. One more so than the other, but... <laughs> <laughs> Which, I'll get to that point, too. Uh, but, it, like, they, they didn't have to kill these 6,000 people that could have perpetuated the human race, which is what they are trying. I just, I don't understand CRM's, like, ultimate vision. Like, where are you going with this? Like, I'm sure out of those 6,000 people, there was someone who was just as smart as Hope and Iris put together, well, you know? And so here's another thing, and this kind of flows in pretty neatly to that, which is that I didn't really get the feeling that Hope was all that bright, I got the feeling that she was brighter than Iris, but I certainly didn't think that she was a world-saving genius, which is right. why I was much more into the, she has a cure to the zombie virus in her blood plot yes, line. I, yeah, you know? I still feel like that is the thing, except for they were so, they were harping so hard on, oh, she's brilliant. She can make champagne and rebuild computers. <laughs> and and then we come to find out that Iris actually is the one who walks in and says, no, I, I think that chord goes there. Okay. So <laughs> I hope is the person who does the jigsaw puzzle. And I, Iris is the person that comes in with the last piece. That's all <laughs> right. I gotta say. <laughs> like, yes, if she had the last piece stuffed in been, her bra, but. <laughs> it would not have been complete without that last piece. Oh, she's her puzzle piece. But, <laughs> well, and the whole, like, all of a sudden, like, uh, Iris figures out that Huck's, you know, up to something. Like, she seems to be the one to swoop in at the end and take credit for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Although she did give Hope credit for the computer rebuild. But it was just, okay, together they're a whole brain, but it's not 50 <laughs> It's like 90-10. Oh my god, that's hilarious. That is so funny. <laughs> I tell that to my boss all the time, because together make a whole brain. You know, I sometimes say that to my coworkers as well. I'm like, damn, between the two of us, we're one really good healthcare provider. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So I just, yeah, it really, really uneven season. Mm -hmm. Um, Very heavy at the end. <sighs> okay, a couple of other things in Rotting Potpourri. Did you catch that Percy called Elton Rocket Man? Yes. I thought that was hilarious. Um, My favorite uh, nickname was Corduroy. <laughs> Which, by the way, did I call it or what? The corduroy suit got drenched in blood. <laughs> and I love how, I, I can't remember, if, I think it was Hope who was feeling bad about um, Elton's out there in his little corduroy <laughs> yes! suit. <laughs> it's so cold. It's colder than it's been this, since the whole time we set out. Yeah. <laughs> corduroy suit. Which I, so it was nice to see Elton in a rain jacket. So we actually saw him in like real clothes and not right. just his corduroy suit. <laughs> I really thought that Elton dragging Percy's body along was pretty unrealistic. And unnecessary. Like, yes. They, they collapsed near a building if you would have just made your way inside the building for safety. Well, and then him wielding Silas's wrench... Totally unrealistic. Yeah. I, I didn't think he had the, the arm strength to raise that wrench. Mm -mm. And then the taking the pocket fisherman and wrapping it around the walkers. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so awful. 
<laughs> like I, I heard Benny Hill music in my head. <laughs> Someone in one of the articles that I read, and maybe it was one, one, one of the Forbes articles, compared it to the scene where the X-Wing fighters go in and oh, the Anna, wrap yeah. the cords around the, the Imperial walkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I hadn't thought of that until you mentioned that. I was like, yeah, that was kind of the same move. I am just going to say again, can we please in season two lose the corduroy ser- suit and the triceratops horn? Please, 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 please. Oh, God. There was a time when um, uh, Iris was going in to stab a, a walker with it. And I was like, oh, God, please let it fall off. Please let it fall off. <laughs> I was like, if if they're going to make something not survive the end of this season, please let it be the right. if they're rhinoceros not gonna, horn. If they're not going to kill a character, please kill that weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I would even put up with the corduroy suit longer than that. <laughs> Especially now that it's blood soaked. Oh. Um, I do want to say that, hey, Steve got his wish for a dramatically expanded cast at the end. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I did see an uh, an interview with the actresses who play Iris and Hope, and they call those people the tree people. Huh. Yeah. They're like, we're not really sure what they are, so we've just taken to calling them the tree people. So I call I called them in my notes the CRM defectors. Um, I'm not sure if it was Kane or Tassie, but one of them referred to them as the resistance. Yeah. <laughs> The rebels. No, the resistance. Really? I yeah. I sworn it was rebels. No, it was the resistance. Yeah, okay. Um, um, but I will say that we got Will's story. We met Will, who is hella gorgeous. Yes. And I am glad that we got the Will Felix storyline. I am too, except for the fact of of all of the forests and all of the world, you had to come walking into mine. Like, I'm just like, what are the odds? Honey, it is the walking dead. We have suspended disbelief (laughs) for (laughs) 10 seasons. True. (laughs) How many coincidences? (laughs) Very true. I mean, Jada showed up with a helicopter for the love of God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I do want to say that as far as I was concerned, they could have stopped the last episode at the scene where Huck says to Felix, well, you are aces, really. Like, that would have been perfect. It was ending on kind of a grim note. It was ending on kind of a dark note. We saw the... We we knew that that Hope was going to continue on to CRM with Huck. We didn't, I didn't feel like they needed to do the whole thing where they get picked up by the helicopter. I didn't, didn't feel like they needed to do the whole Felix Will reunion with the forest people introduction. It it would have been great if they had stopped it right there. But they didn't. But they didn't. So, so we got another 10 minutes of, eh. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I missed something, um... With the CRM guys, like, coming out of a helicopter and running through the woods where there was that um, cross and the the zombie that looked like he was kind of, like, he sat up from his own grave but got stuck. I missed... What did I miss there? That Whoa, I don't even was... have a visual memory of that. I apparently okay. blinked out for, like, two minutes of the episode. <laughs> okay. It, like... I, I feel like that it had something to do with the the Will Tree People storyline. But uh. I just I remember I remember seeing them like shoot one of the, the walkers in the woods and it falling down next to that because they, they were focused in kind of on the grave, but it wasn't centered on the screen. And I just I I was so enthralled with the zombie like trying to figure out like okay, like, did he claw his way out of his own grave but only got halfway? <laughs> like, I was just, it it was so distracting because I just, like, I couldn't get my head. So, like, I I completely missed 
something there. I felt like it was that challenge where they're like, okay, count how many times the team passes the basketball and you completely miss the <laughs> pink gorilla going across the screen. Because right. you're so focused. Yeah. So I missed something there. I might have to go back and try and find that scene. Which I um, will say, by the way, the zombies were no good. The zombies in these two episodes were no good. I wrote down in my notes, huh, they blew their entire zombie budget on the Wasp Walker this season. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, we've got Greg Nicotero's disciples at our disposal. We probably don't have Greg for this series, but we probably have several of his disciples and we can't do better zombies than the ones we had in this episode. We can, because we had the Wasp Walker. Yeah. Yeah, there were some good walkers this season. Um, there were, but they blew into the their trees. budget early on. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only one that was real memorable was the one that like I was so hyper-focused on. because, Which I, apparently I, I was not hyper-focused on at all. <laughs> Because, I mean, it was just this, like, hand moving and, like, a head that was moving. Like, it's it's literally like somebody buried him and he reanimated in his grave, sat up, but got stuck and just kind of was left there. Seriously, I'm a little embarrassed. I don't remember it at all. <laughs> now, I will tell you, as I said before you and I sign on... I got up at four o'clock this morning, so I was a little tired when I first started watching this. Mm, okay. I may have missed it. <laughs> I, like I said, when I, um, so I watched, uh, I did one watch through of the two episodes, and then I didn't have enough time to do a second one. And so I basically went and skipped around. And let me tell you, there was a lot, there's... <sighs> Okay, for having to pay for Sling, they're super ad happy. I, was, I will I'm, say, I'm, I getting my Walking Dead through Amazon on AMC Plus. I'm not plagued by any commercials. None. Hmm. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah. So, in know. in keeping with the, I didn't think Hope was that brainy. I was really shocked when she decoded the map. <laughs> I really was. I thought, I didn't know Hope had it in her. I know she can brew champagne, but I didn't realize she could decode a map. You know, I see it. I can see it. She's bright. She's sassy. I didn't think she was Val Kilmer real genius material. Mm, I think that was kind of a, a more puzzle-ish than, you know. It was, <laughs> oh, it was like a, it's Sudoku in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, I was going to say it's more like Sudoku. Yep. <laughs> yep. Huck and Felix's fight. I did love Huck and Felix's fight. I actually wrote down, this is Star Wars epic. This is Luke, I am your father epic. It would have been yeah. better if one of them had been killed. <laughs> 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 but it was a very um, good fight scene. Yeah, honestly, so it actually made me think of the preacher fight scene that I oh, really, really that loved. Like, that's mm -hmm, the one shot. Mm -hmm. I I would have loved if they would have could have done a one shot uh, of their fight scene. You know, just all around this house that's on fire. I think that would have been great. But I mean, it was it was knocked down, drag out. You know, they did completely telegraph that she was going to kick that lantern over. Oh yeah, completely telegraphed it. But aside from that, the fight was awesome. Yeah. Um, I loved the reveal that she was the one who injured Felix. I know you mentioned that earlier, but I I didn't catch that. I mean, I didn't catch it until the reveal. I don't know if they showed it and I missed it or if they truly did not reveal it until they showed. I I I didn't catch it until it was it was revealed that she was actually the cause of that, but I am kind of like really he didn't notice she like gouged him. <laughs> I, I just find it really hard to believe, even in the heat of battle like that, that, like, he didn't turn around and be like, watch where you're poking that thing. 
He's lucky she didn't hamstring him. That was a pretty bad injury. Yeah, I mean, ugh. I I have a um my when I stand on my tippy toes, my Achilles grinds, and it it grosses me out every time. And so like anything to do with like the the back of the ankle. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've seen a, a torn Achilles a time or two, so I guess it I, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything else. I, you know, I, I generally really liked it. There were some really great moments. Um, I should I, hope so I agree. Over two hours. Right. <laughs> I agree with you that there was, was some problematic stuff. And it was mostly for the season overall. Um, Yes, definitely if I had to rate the season overall, I would not rate it a 4.2. I was thinking about it earlier and thinking, how would I? I would probably rate it like a 3.5. It was a fair effort. Maybe a 3.8 if I'm being really generous. Yeah, it's just there. There was, like I said before we started podcasting, there was so much that was left unexplained and not in a good way, not in like a cliffhangery way. In a, why the hell are they doing that way? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll watch it. We'll podcast it. We'll do season two. I was gonna say there's only one more season of this. Right. Left anyway. yeah. I mean. And maybe they will explain it away why they had to kill 6,000 people for hope. She better have a cure to the zombie virus in her bloodstream if they killed 6,000 people to keep her from going back to campus community. God, I'm sitting here trying to go through the episode. (laughs) To find that scene. To find that dang (laughs) scene. Well, if you like, find it, you'll have to tell me where, which, which episode it was in and, and approximately where. Right. I'm assuming it was in the first episode. I honestly don't know. Maybe I hallucinated the whole thing like uh, <laughs> Elton hallucinated Percy. Okay, Biters, did she or did she not hallucinate the zombie clawing its way out of its grave? <laughs> <laughs> And was it a beta moment or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I mean, this is our last Walking Dead episode until yeah. probably spring. So I'm I'm thinking that maybe I will take you up on taking next week off. So we will be one week without biters and we'll kind of regroup and figure out what we're going to do. So... I kind of want to watch the Netflix uh, kind of train to Poussin type movie, Hashtag Alive. Did you so, say it was a limited series? No, it's a, it was a singular movie. It's a movie. Okay. Yep. So do you want to yep. do that next week or do you want to take a week off and do it the following week? Let's take a week off. Okay. Let's give everyone a chance to watch it. Um, hashtag Alive. And... Uh, then we'll watch it and podcast it. Okay. Yeah. And we'll kind of problem solve what we're going to do until we have new Walking Dead content, which I think was the end of February is is when 10C is coming back. Yeah, that sounds right. So, well, hit us up, Biters. What did you guys think of the the finale of World Beyond? Yeah, and if you have any ideas of what you would like to hear between now and the end of February, uh, let us know. Um, you know, if if Diane, if I can get Diane to watch Idiocracy for the other podcast, <laughs> she'll watch anything. <laughs> we can convince her of anything. <laughs> oh, that was a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any feedback? I don't think so. I don't think we, okay. we have any new feedback as of of what we shared last week. So Okay. Well, I guess until we podcast again in probably two weeks, just remember, take, take it, it one, one 
dead day, day at, at a time. time. Guess I, I won't talk to you next week. Happy Pearl Harbor Day, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and maybe my birthday. Maybe we'll podcast on my birthday. Oh, is your birthday a Saturday or a Sunday? Or I think it's a Saturday. Oh. Yes, everyone. Marnell's birthday is the 12th of December. Yep. And Lilith's is what? The 11th? I think so. The the real housewife's housewife? Yeah. <laughs> Your birthday is a Saturday, so I don't know that we'll podcast on your birthday, we'll, but our next podcast will be sometime around your birthday. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Your present is probably going to be late because I'm not sure if it's here. Oh, that's totally fine. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that, just just any, if anything goes wrong, it COVID. Right. Yep. All right, All everybody. Right, stay ha safe. Have a good two weeks. Bye. Bye.